Hi there, welcome to Sydney and this review of the Hilton in Sydney, located on 488 George Street. Before we go exploring the hotel, it would be great if you can hit that like button anytime during the video. It helps the channel, plus it helps more travellers see these videos. The hotel is located right opposite to the Queen Victoria building and is just a step away from the tram stop, which is also conveniently called the QVB stop. I stayed at the Hilton one night. I checked in on the 25th of April 2021 and checked out the next day. During my stay, I travelled around Sydney and I saw that things are getting back to normal around the city. Trains and trams were almost full and people were out and about in the city. Oh, by the way, if you are watching this video 10 years later, I'm just referring to how things slowly got back to normal after COVID. The Hilton in Sydney is located in the heart of Sydney CBD, which means you are in the middle of the hustle and bustle of the city. If you are a business traveller, this is the perfect hotel to stay. If you are a leisure traveller, the hotel's location is ideal since all the touristy sites are in close proximity. Since it's next to the tram line, getting to places like Circular Quay, Town Hall, Chinatown and beyond is super easy. Coming in from Melbourne, I felt that the public transport system in Sydney was a little bit expensive. Of course, I'm comparing this against a free tram zone in Melbourne CBD. I'd really love to hear what um, residents of Sydney think about the public transport system there and the charges. Leave a comment if you can. Oh, and by the way, the reason why I'm showing you these buildings is just to show you that these are quite close to the hotel. It's only a few hundred meters away. Now let's take a look at the hotel. The Hilton Sydney features a massive high ceiling lobby area. It's quite popular for functions and business events. Of course, with COVID, there might be a drop in hotel events as well. There is a lot of seating options and also a cafe. I traveled to the Hilton on the 25th of April in 2021 um, and the hotel had put in several processes to stay COVID safe. Some of the entrances to the hotel was completely closed off. The rotating door entrance from George Street was split into two entries, an exit and an entry. Here is another angle of the lobby area as well as the reception. The lobby lighting was absolutely fantastic thanks to the natural light that falls upon it. With COVID restrictions, it's compulsory for visitors to the hotel to check in, but this doesn't apply to hotel guests. By the way, if you're traveling to New South Wales, to Sydney or to the Hilton anytime soon, please remember to download the New South Wales Services app. The QR codes um, in all cafes, restaurants and other venues will only scan through the app, so it is compulsory to have this. For this stay, I booked the Hilton King guest room. Uh, however, the team in Hilton Sydney had upgraded me to a King Deluxe room, which was on the 38th floor. Views from the 38th floor was spectacular. There are several taller buildings around this hotel, so views are somewhat restricted. My room in the 38th floor had a great view, however. Before we take a tour in the room, let me use this opportunity to request some feedback from you in the form of a like or a comment. This helps these videos get traction and more people get to see the content. Also, it tells me if you enjoy these videos. I plan to cover more hotel properties in Australia and also cover more Hilton properties across Australia and worldwide. So your feedback is very valuable to me. All right, let's check the room out.
Welcome to room 3811 in the Hilton in Sydney. The room was good size and looked new. And the reason for that was that the hotel had undergone a $25 million refurbishment. Refurbishments include new carpets, curtains, tapware, as well as new recliners. The room also features upgraded bedside lamps and also a 55-inch TV. The rooms also include a custom table instead of the regular work desks. This was part of the refurbishment process as well. An article I read from the executivetraveler.com mentioned that 547 rooms as well as 40 suites has now been redesigned and refurbished. I'll leave the link to the article below. The hotel has apparently also introduced two room types, corner rooms which provide an extra window for taking in the views as well as family rooms whereby two guest rooms can be interconnected. This room I'm staying in appears to be one of those family rooms. Based on the emergency evacuation floor plan, it looks like the 38th floor has 24 rooms. Standard tea and coffee facilities were included in the room. There was a kettle, some mugs, as well as some drinking glasses. The minibar, however, was empty and I have a feeling that it was all due to COVID restrictions. There was also a hairdryer, an iron, an ironing table, two robes and two bathroom slippers included in the room. The bathroom was actually quite spacious with a separate area for the sink and a shower as well as a bathtub. And the room was quite generous with the towels as well. The bathroom was quite modern and up to date with plenty of good lighting. However, I wasn't a fan of the sliding glass door. Personal opinion, my preference would have been to have a door that opens and closes rather than one that slides. There were a number of times I actually ran into the sliding doors. The room had plenty of power outlets, so charging your device was not an issue at all. The room also included a universal power adapter which came in handy.
During check-in, I got two water bottles as well as a Dettol hand wipes kit. These were super useful when it came to wiping down surfaces in the hotel and even outside. Well done to Hilton for providing these wipes. In terms of the view, the room I was staying in had great views despite some limitations. My room was facing the south of the city and had good views of Sydney Town Hall. Surprisingly, it also had a clear view of all the airplanes coming in to land at Sydney Airport. As an aviation geek, this was absolutely fantastic. I hope you enjoy the room tour so far. Hilton serves evening pre-dinner snacks and drinks between 5 and 7 p.m. for gold and diamond members as well as guests who are in the executive flows. During my stay, the executive lounge in the hotel was closed, so all the snacks and drinks were served in the hotel, restaurant, the glass, brasserie. So let's go down and check that out. Dinner snacks and drinks are complimentary for Diamond and Gold members as well as guests in the executive floor. During my visit, they served cold cuts such as ham as well as cheese and also a great pumpkin salad. The drinks menu had a great range of non-alcoholic and alcoholic beverages. Please note, only some drinks are complimentary and the rest needs to be paid. However, during my visit, I decided to splurge a little bit and ordered an expensive glass of Verve Clicquot. Oh, I forgot to mention before, they were actually serving hot foods as well. This included prawn dumplings and I decided fish to go tartare. with the prawn dumplings. Here's a snapshot of the All menu the complimentary front items are clearly labeled in blue. After pre-dinner snacks, I decided to come back to the room for a little while to get some rest. 
The sunset views from the room were spectacular. After about an hour in the room, I went out for dinner to the nearby Chinatown, uh, which is only about 20 minutes of a walk from the hotel or a 5 minute tram ride. The morning views from the room was absolutely stunning. This is at 6 o'clock in the morning in April. I hope you enjoyed the morning views from the room. Now it's time to get some breakfast. I went for breakfast at 8 a.m. and surprising all the good tables with a good view of George Street was occupied. I decided to sit in a table with the couch facing the entrance. In terms of hot drinks, you can order cappuccinos or lattes from the barista in the restaurant. I believe they charge you a flat rate of $5. I just had the normal house black coffee. It was nice to see a breakfast buffet served in a hotel once again. The number of options seems to be significantly reduced and you could also see some spacing between every dish. On the day there was fried rice, dumplings, sautéed mushrooms, bacon, pork and chicken sausages, grilled tomatoes and hash browns. They also had a station for cold cuts as well as fruits and yogurts. I didn't film it on the day but next to the station where they had the fruit there's also one station for cereals and juices. Uh, the juices included mango, pineapple, orange and apple. In a separate side of the restaurant, there was a station for breads and pastries. There was a variety of jams as well as pastries such as croissants and danishes. There were donuts as well as mini muffins. Overall, the buffet, even though small, had a good variety of options. I would love to come back once again and see the full potential of this buffet once things with COVID settles down. Oh, I forgot to mention, you can actually order omelettes as well. I decided to go with an omelette with everything but with a little bit of mushroom and cheese. To wrap up this video, let me show you the TV menu which includes all details about the hotel as well as the in-room dining menu. Feel free to post the video and get a closer look. During my stay, only free-to-air Australian TV channels were available. I read some reviews from other guests who stated that international channels were not available due to the cost-cutting processes in the hotel due to COVID. The Chinese TV channel CCTV was available.
and for some feedback about the hotel. I could hear people in the walkway. I could almost make out what they were saying. Opening and closing of the doors in the rooms nearby was felt and heard in my room. This is not a huge concern, but it would be nice if it can be fixed. The hotel is quite old, so even after the refurbishment, a little bit of this age is still showing. It would be nice if Hilton can do something about this, but once again, it's not a big issue. I booked this room directly with the Hilton Hotel using their Hilton Honors app. The room rate was $293. The upgrade in terms of dollars was roughly $14. The difference can be seen in the Hilton Honors room rates comparison between the King Guest and the King Superior. The Samsung TV in your room works with Samsung Smart Connect. You can cast videos to the TV directly from your phone, so I was able to watch Netflix. I was glad I could do that because I'm not a fan of watching regular TV with all the ads. In conclusion, I hope you like this video of the Hilton in Sydney. It would be great if you can hit that like button to show your support to this channel. It costs nothing by the way. If you can't, that's fine too. Goodbye, and I'll see you in my next video.